Welcome to our course Activation Function and in this part of our course we are going to learn about ReLU. Let me write here the ReLU or what we call the rectified linear unit or activation function. Now before we go to the proper understanding of ReLU, let's first go back to the linear activation function so that we would be able to properly understand what our ReLU is. So we said that mathematically the linear activation function has this formula f or the function of x is equal to x which would mean to say that this function is represented by a straight line okay this is a straight line right so that means to say that whatever is being inputted into this function then the resulting value would be as is so we don't change the positive to the negative or zero to positive and vice versa because we leave it as it is. In the case of ReLU, it's going to be different but they can be similar in a way that there is also a straight line. So the straight line would start from this point, the origin or zero, and up. So what about when we have the values that are negative? So these are the negative values and these are the positive values. Unlike your linear activation function wherein the values, whether it is positive or zero, would be as is, in the case of ReLU, it's going to be different because when the value is negative, shall we say negative 1, negative 2, and so on, to inf negative infinity, then they will be equated to zero. So it means to say that negative 2, negative 1 will always be transformed to zero. So that's how it works. What about when the values we have is positive? So if, say for example, we have positive 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. So when the values are positive, then they're taken as is. That's why from the origin 0, when we input a number to our equation, then it becomes higher. What does it mean when we have something like this? When we have this numbers both positive and negative it means to say that this part of the inputs are not activated and only those inputs which mean or meet certain criteria of being positive they will be activated in short our relu does not activate all the neurons at the same time so let me write here when the value of our output so the value of the output would be um, less than zero, then they will be deactivated. You have to remember that they will always be deactivated. So how do we represent ReLU mathematically? So we represent ReLU mathematically using this formula. The function of x is equal to the max between zero and x. So that would bring us to the conclusion that the value of our function when we have or when we use a value is zero or it could be one or any positive number. But when we do the derivative, the derivations, we're going to have only two values. It could be zero or one. So we're going to have that one later on. So for now, let's talk about the advantages of using ReLU as our activation function. So in a way, ReLU is mostly used and widely used in neural networks as opposed to other forms of activation function which we're going to learn in the future. The first advantage of a you of the use of ReLU is that it is computationally efficient. This is efficient. Um, computationally efficient. Maybe you would want to ask me why is it that the use of ReLU is very efficient? The reason for this efficiency is that we only consider the use of um, certain numbers. And in this case, we only consider the positive numbers to be transformed and the active, uh, I mean activated. So those numbers which are less than zero, they are deactivated. So that would mean there are just less numbers to be processed. And because there are just less numbers to be processed, there is a great tendency of making the calculation less complex. So it becomes simpler. And also, number two is that it converges gradient descent to the global minimum faster. So to the global minimum faster. Okay, so let me repeat that. 
it accelerates to converge at the local map minimum faster minimum so what would be the reason for this acceleration of convergence to the local minimum or, the, or to the global minimum the reason is that is the linear the linear non-saturating property now let's go to this one so we have said that a while ago there can only be two um, values for the relu that is it can be greater than zero or it can be less than zero so how does this one happen so this happens when we take the derivative of x or of f with respect to x so we write that mathematically as this so when we get the derivative of the function with respect to x then we could get only two values it could be one it could be zero and so when limits are put into consideration this would mean that our relu is having a dying problem let me write here dying problem and why would it be a dying relu problem there are two reasons for this one there can be the neurons in our function during the backpropagation process. So what does it mean? So remember this, that um, we do not consider those negative values. And so because we do not consider them, then they are left untouched. They are not updated. So which means to say that the rates and biases are not updated. So they are considered dead. And number two would be that when the values that are negative they are considered um, zero, they are immediately considered zero, then that would mean that the ability of our model to fit to a certain data would become decreased. And this happens sometimes, or in most cases, if not in all cases, when we use both the test and train test data, and also when you make um, cross-validations, when during the training of your data, um, you do not update or consider some biases, then when you test that, there would be a decrease of the ability to fit in this particular um, data. And so when you go to production of your neural network, then there is no problem in its ability to make prediction. Do you want to know more about this channel? Just click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.